morning, we're here for a very, very special event. But before we start, I'm asking you all to stand for the national anthem. I'm going to ask you to remain standing. I now invite project engineer Delano Mighty to the podium. All right. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of ingenuity, of creativity, and of excellence. It is only because of you, Lord, that we are able to stand here today, that we are able to launch this, uh, this line, Almighty Father, this company. We thank you that you have brought us here, and we pray that you will indeed establish the work of our hands as we look to you as our source of wisdom and strength. We pray your blessings on these proceedings. And in your name we pray and say thanks. Amen and amen. Amen. You may sit. All right, good morning. I'd just like to say welcome to everyone who is here present and, of course, online. We do things digitally and we do things physically. And this is going to be a worldwide phenomenon in a while and Jamaica as always likes to stay ahead of the curve we're here this morning for the Evergo Jamaica launch event before I proceed though I'd like to say a special welcome to you know some very special persons who are here this morning chairman and CEO of Inter Energy Senor Rolando Gonzalez Bunster welcome I'd also like to say welcome to Michel Gantois, president of JPS Limited, the Evergo Project team. This is a very, very special event. Our very own Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, Honorable Daryl Vaz, Minister of Science, Energy and Technology, Honorable Robert Montague, Minister of Transport and Mining, of course, His Excellency Asif Ahmad from the British High Commission, and Wayne Mackenzie Odi, President and CEO. Persons are probably wondering why something like this this morning. Listen, if it's egg, Jamaica in the red. We're going to stay ahead of the curve. In the next decade or so, what we're going to be seeing are less vehicles powered by fossil fuels. We're going to see a surge. We're going to see an increase. And presently, we have some in Jamaica, and we have some demonstrations that will be done here this morning. You're going to see it for yourself of electric vehicles right here. We have hybrids. We have electric vehicles. And guess what? This market is currently underserved. We're not going to wait until the rain is on our head tops to get a go. And this is why this morning, we're having this very special launch. I know you're going to love this. And we're going to show you some very, very special things here this morning. I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'm going to allow the presenters to come on stage and tell you more about it. But guess what? We had one of our vehicles coming in from Kingston this morning. We have Nick Lou and Maya. I invite you now to pay attention to the screen. Welcome to 
Everglow. I'm Moyo. Hi, Moyo. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Everglow's level two charging station. Okay. Right. Now, you're going to disconnect the hose from the charging port. Okay. You're going to plug this into your vehicle. This is your RFID card. Okay, fine. And tap. Okay, it's authorizing. Now go ahead and press charge. Right. Now I'm going to show you that the vehicle is charging. Right. So speaking on the topic of technology now, mm -hmm. do you guys have an app? We do. We okay. have an app that's available in the Apple and the Google Play Store. Right. So as you go in, you'll see a map. Right. And you'll be able to see all the charging stations that are either available or unavailable. Nice. So before you hit the road, you just go and you can actually reserve the charging station and you can also pay through the virtual app. The app okay. Evago is a very intelligent network. This app really interfaces with the actual charger very well and it syncs. It allows you to interface with the charger before you get to the charger. So we just want to ensure that convenience is at your disposal. Evago is the most sophisticated platform of electric vehicle charging stations in Jamaica. Nice. Now our aim is to create a network where you can go wherever you want, sustainably and reliably, moving you towards a more environmentally responsible future. Now our chargers are the most advanced of this kind and right. what this means is that in a short time you can charge up and be on your way. You want to be able to go where you want to go and not be worried about running Definitely. out of charge. We are going to strategically install chargers near you across the 14 parishes of Jamaica. Are there different types of chargers? Definitely. We have two types of chargers. We have the level two charger right. or the semi-fast charger. Yep. And we also have a level three charger or a fast charger or a DC charger. Nice. We understand that convenient access and ease of use is very important to drivers. Right. So trust me when I say, make the switch to an electric vehicle. We that got you. Good. You know, interfacing with the chargers today. How do you feel about it? What was the experience like? Honestly, this experience is going to be life changing because you know I like the fact that you guys are moving with technology, and I think I want to move along with technology with you guys. What did you think about the app? The app was good. It was very easy to use. What I realized with it is just straightforward. So you put in information. Once you put in the information, bam, it brings up the map. On the map, it shows you which charging station is being used and the billing is, is done on the app as well. So, like you said, it's just simple, easy, one, two, three. EV is the way of the future. Yeah, and it's also good for our country as well because sure. right now, we're heavily dependent on oil and fossil fuels. Yep. So, Evago is happy that we can be in line with the government's you know, 2030 goal to transition fully right. into renewables and its national energy policy. Well, my first experience in an EV was actually quiet. Um, it's the first time driving a car that you don't really hear the engine roaring as much. But I mean, apart from that, it was a good experience, pretty good throttle response, torquier than usual, and fuel efficient. Owning an electric vehicle is a really cost-effective decision. Right. It's one of the best decisions that you could ever make because not only is it cheaper to charge your vehicle than to buy gas, right. it's also less expensive and less frequent to maintain the vehicle. Right. So you save money not just on your energy bill, but yeah. also on what you may be paying often for an internal combustion engine vehicle. Right. So it's a lot more convenient. In the long run, you'll end up with a lot of savings. Trust me, you did a very good job at letting me understand what Evergo is all about. So I'm really looking forward to the rollout. Well, I'm glad you're satisfied. And right about now, Nick and Moya should be rolling into the car park. Here they are. Yeah. Quiet, clean, and green, and the way to go.
If I didn't tell you, you probably wouldn't have known that they're driving in roundabout, no. Less emission, clean fuel. It's all about Evergo. This, my dear ladies and gentlemen, is a wave of the future. Yes. Now listen, Inter Energy has already installed over 150 outlets already in the Dominican Republic. In Jamaica, we're looking to install about 60 by the end of 2021. We're going to ensure that there are outlets right across Jamaica. So wherever you go, wherever you'd like to visit, there's always going to be an outlet. Now, other islands are following suit. So don't think that we're going to be alone in this pursuit. Nick and Maya, how was the drive? How was the drive? It was good? All right. You got good mileage? All right, love it, love it, love it. Right now we're going to invite to the stage a gentleman who has made a lot of strides. He's the chairman and CEO of Inter Energy, Senor Rolando Gonzalez Bunster. He's Argentinian, and of course, he's with the Argentinian US-based uh, company and chairman and CEO of Inter Energy. Now, prior to finding Inter Energy, he founded and managed Inter Energy's predecessor, Basic Energy Limited, a holding company that owned and operated electrical generation and distribution assets in the Dominican Republic, Panama, and Jamaica. He's a pioneer in the electric sector in the Dominican Republic, and we'd like to welcome him here this morning. Senor Bonsta. Welcome everybody. I am deeply thankful and so honored to welcome you all on this historic occasion towards electric mobility. Technology allows us to have you accompanying us today, both in person and virtually. I would like to extend a special welcome to our guest of honor, Prime Minister of Jamaica, the most honorable Andrew Holness, Minister of Transport and Mining, the Honorable Robert Montague, Minister of Science and Energy and Technology, the Honorable Daryl Vaz, MP Northeast St. Anne, Marsha Smith, and His Worship, the Mayor of St. Anne Council, Sidney Stewart, Richmond Estate Managing Director, Steve Bennett. As InterEnergy Group, we have a strong commitment towards renewable energy contributing to the Sustainable Development Goals. For more than 30 years, InterEnergy has powered people and cities across the Caribbean and Latin America. We have over 1.3 gigawatts of installed and available capacity, providing reliable, cost-effective, and clean energy to the Dominican Republic, Panama, Jamaica, Chile, and soon Uruguay. We are private power pioneers wherever we invest. We play an important role in the economic and social development of countries, markets, and communities. We are the largest and most efficient independent power generator in Jamaica, responsible for almost 40% of the country's total baseload capacity. We have also played a prominent role in the development of renewable power across the region. In 2011, we were the first wind operator in the Dominican Republic. And in 2014, we built the largest wind farm in the Central America and Caribbean region. We've also made significant investments in solar power in Chile, Panama, and the Dominican Republic. We're committed to bringing efficient, clean, and cost-effective energy to the region and following the completion of a project to convert a 380 megawatt diesel and HFO plants to cleaner burning natural gas, over 60% of InterEnergy's total generating capacity will come from low carbon, renewable, and natural gas assets. Besides, we have a long-standing track record of making a successful investment in cutting-edge new technologies from an advanced gas fire generation equipment to smart meters, mobile access, and electric car charging stations, always focused on bringing the best service to our wholesale and retail clients. Our future is brighter, better, and cleaner. We are inter-energy, and we're going from strength to strength. 
The moment has come for a real, energetic and tangible transition. And electric mobility is part of this change. We want to be the forefront of this transformation with initiatives that bring efforts together to help society be part of this change. Today, we take a step forward. The mission we pursue in this meeting is to give you participation in our dream as a group, that electric mobility becoming a reality throughout the region of the Caribbean and Latin America. Our new initiative, Evergo, makes this dream a reality towards a future that is more present than ever. We started in the Dominican Republic and Panama. We have already deployed more than 250 charging stations in the Dominican Republic to reach more than 500 points, another 200 in Panama before the end of 2021. Now it's the moment of Jamaica. The pioneering effort positions us at the forefront of electric mobility in this country. Clean energies move us towards a future that is imminent to the mission in Jamaica to deploy the most sophisticated network of charging stations by the end of 2021. Our goal is to deploy 60 charging stations in this country by the end of the year. Think of a future where mobility, where transportation is powered by the wind, the sun, and water. Additionally, Evergo users will be part of the first international affiliates network of electric vehicle charging stations, which will provide the possibility of using the application in markets such as the United States, Europe, and Latin America. Evergo has developed as the most advanced and sophisticated platform of charging stations for electric vehicles in the region. This is one of our greatest projects as a team. We aim at a more sustainable future for all of us, and this is something we are not doing on our own. We are witnessing an incredible growth in electric mobility throughout the world and we want all of our potential host partners to join us in this very exciting journey. We have shared purpose to bring users and potential users the trust and reliability they need. And this can be possible thanks to the alliance with pioneering brand companies that are committed to developing a more sustainable world. Thank you very much, enjoy the event, and welcome to the future. You just heard from Rolanda Gonzalez, once the chairman and CEO of InterEnergy. We now invite the most honorable Andrew Holness, prime minister, who has served as head of government from October 2011 to January 2012, having succeeded former prime minister, the honorable Bruce Golding. He's our present prime minister and has a formidable task ahead of him, but he's committed to moving Jamaica forward and it's all about technology and clean technology. Good day, everyone. Addressing climate change is one of the defining issues of our generation. Small island developing states like Jamaica produce a minuscule portion of the harmful greenhouse gases that are fueling climate change and are therefore the least responsible for the problem. However, we are the countries most affected by climate change. As a result, we need to not only adapt to the worsening effects of climate change, but also to find ways to develop sustainably. As we seek to recover stronger in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to concurrently build both our environmental as well as our economic resilience. Just over two years ago, the government increased the 2030 renewables target for electricity generation from 30% to a more ambitious 50%. We are well on our way to achieving this target. Given our heavy dependence on imported fuel, the volatility of oil prices, and scarce foreign exchange, transitioning to renewable energy is not only a matter of reducing our carbon footprint, it is a matter of our national security and survival. Hence, my pleasure to officially launch Evergo Jamaica, a clean energy-based company dedicated to improving the transport sector through the availability of charging ports for electric cars. The days 
of the internal combustion engine are numbered. And more and more people are turning to electric vehicles, or at least to hybrid models. In addition to cutting emissions, electric vehicles provide many benefits to drivers. They save you money, are cheaper to fuel, and maintenance costs are lower as electric vehicles do not need oil changes, spark plugs, and timing belts. Electric vehicles also offer a better driving experience as they are virtually silent. It is inevitable, therefore, that electric vehicles will become commonplace in the transportation market. Jamaica must not be left behind. Electric mobility is a long-term commitment for the government and is a critical element of our national energy policy in keeping with our Vision 2030 goals. Key to our stronger recovery from COVID-19 are fostering and embracing innovation and technology. Partnerships with companies such as Inter Energy Holdings through its subsidiary Evergo in Jamaica and the technology they bring will help us to build the infrastructure necessary to transition to large scale adoption of electric mobility. The company's commitment to installing 60 chargers by the end of year means that hybrid and electric vehicle owners can drive without fear of running out of charge. I'm confident that this is just the start and Evergo will grow its fleet of chargers from 60 to many more, where Jamaicans will see electric chargers in every parish and town. I offer my heartiest congratulations to Inter Energy Jamaica in supporting the movement to accelerate Jamaica's transition to sustainable transportation. Electric vehicles are the future. We are on a mission to transform Jamaica and we are moving in the right direction to make clean energy the way of the future. The future is up on us. Thank you, Prime Minister Holness. And a company that is already on board is Porsche. and gentlemen why wait when we can blaze a trail and build capacity we now bring to the screen a gentleman who has served Jamaica in several capacities he's a former minister without portfolio in the office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for information and telecommunications he's also served as former Minister of State in the office of the Prime Minister with responsibility for project implementation and service delivery we now bring to you Honorable Daryl Vaz Minister of Science Energy and Technology I'm Daryl Vaz Minister of Science Energy and Technology and I am pleased to participate in the launch of the Evergo EV charging stations in Jamaica. I must commend the Inter Energy Group and their partners for this initiative, which comes at a time when Jamaica is making bold moves towards advancing our e-mobility plans. The Government of Jamaica welcomes all partnerships and efforts which enable us to harness the power of cutting edge energy solutions to fuel growth of our citizen and the creation of a new Jamaica. As the world moves to find cleaner, more environmentally friendly and sustainable energy solutions, Jamaica is strategically poised to participate fully in the electric vehicle revolution. Our national energy policy speaks to facilitating the use of more fuel-efficient vehicles in the transport sector 
in an effort to secure Jamaica's energy supply. Our diversification efforts and our emphasis on cleaner sources of energy have paved the way for the accommodation of new technologies such as electric vehicles in our energy sector. In a country where we have more than 30% of petroleum consumed by the transportation sector, we are cognizant that fuel and vehicle efficiency must be among the options for our people. The future is electric, and as a government, electric vehicles is one of our main priorities. Recently, I participated in the Jamaica Public Service Foundation and Inter-American Development Bank's public forum on electric vehicles. The forum was part of the IDB-funded Build a Sustainable Electric Mobility Ecosystem for Inclusion and Access Project. Under component two of this project, the JPS plans to deploy 12 charging stations. I'm aware that the Inter-Energy intends to establish some 63 charging stations across Jamaica. Both of these projects augur well for the development of a modern, diversified, and sustainable energy sector. Prior to this, Jamaica hosted a high-level forum on e-mobility and the Fourth Energy and Climate Partnership of the Americas, ECPA, in 2020, which deepened our partnership and collaborations in e-mobility. Combined with renewable energy, e-mobility has risen as one of the technological solutions with the most potential to reduce fossil fuel dependency within the transportation sector. Additionally, it should be considered as a key driver in local and regional decarbonization and energy transition plans. Ladies and gentlemen, the move towards electric vehicles not only reduces our dependence on imported oil, but it is an important aspect of our efforts to mitigate the effects of climate change. With advancements in technology, we are constantly finding ways to be more efficient and combat the effects of climate change. As recognized by our nationally determined contribution, NDC, a shift to cleaner energy will reduce local air pollution and therefore benefit human health. I'm pleased that Jamaica is forging ahead with our electric vehicle plans and have the requisite public-private partnership which will propel us even further. Ladies and gentlemen, energy is a critical part to our development as a country and through our many development partners and stakeholders. Jamaica has emerged as a regional leader and a shining example in energy. The linkages between energy and transportation sectors are clear. Nothing moves without it. The ease of movement and modes of transportation are integral to our productivity and advancement in a fast-paced and interconnected world. My commendations once again to InterEnergy for this timely and significant launch that will fuel Jamaica's growth in energy and further propel us towards a new Jamaica. I thank you. Thank you, Minister Vaz. All right. Our next speaker is a no-nonsense, action-oriented gentleman. He brings to the transport and mining portfolio a collaborative approach to leadership that is essential to building partnerships between the ministries, departments, and agencies, and the citizens of Jamaica. I now welcome Honorable Robert Montague, Minister of Transport and Mining. Good morning. I am Robert Montague, Minister of Transport and Mining here in Jamaica. And I'm very happy and pleased to be associated with the launch of Everglow's program here in Jamaica, building out charging station for electric vehicles. It is estimated that there's almost a billion vehicles in the world, two to three million of which are electric vehicles or hybrid, some kind of hybrid vehicles. Everglow is tapping into a potential market. And let us congratulate them for the work that they have been doing in the Caribbean and Central America in providing clean energy for this region. As we look forward to rolling out electric vehicles into Jamaica, the government is participating by adding to the JUTC fleet a number of electric buses. We believe that this will help to reduce our carbon footprint, it will reduce our operating costs, and it is a part, the cutting edge of the future. 
So by having more charging stations in and around the whole island, we will encourage persons to get into the electric vehicle business. The government is also moving to adjust its regulations to make it easier for the normal person to get an electric vehicle. It is the way of the future. We believe that in transportation, we must do what we can do to reduce our carbon footprint, to utilize more and more clean energy so that the world will become a better place. It is estimated that by 2040, some 2 billion motor vehicles will be on the road. And it is also estimated that approximately three to 400 million will be electric vehicles. So we are beginning a revolution, cutting edge, opening new frontiers. And the Ministry of Transport and Mining in Jamaica is pleased to be associated with this. And we wish Evergrow all the very best and all the success and prosperity in this new initiative. We support it, we are with you, and we will be using the charging station soon. Minister of Transport and Mining, Honorable Robert Montague, BMW is also on board. You know the business world is changing when working turns into co-working and officers can be everywhere, even here. Showing empathy is now a sign of strength and the environment jumps to the top of everyone's agenda. So. Are you ready to change? All right. Our next speaker is a gentleman who I know is very much into clean energy and into everything eco. I have seen him on Twitter and on Instagram, and he loves Jamaica. And I think even after he leaves Jamaica, he will be back for sure. I welcome His Excellency Asif Ahmad. He's been a British High Commissioner to Jamaica since August 2017. He's an environmental steward and was the first to grace our country with his highly coveted and fully electric Jaguar IPS in April 2021. I welcome to the stage right now His Excellency Asif Ahmad. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for allowing me to join you on this very, very special day. It is indeed very, very timely. Today was the very first day we took our Jaguar I-Pace out of Kingston on the North-South Highway, and here we are on its first journey. So this is not about talk. This is about action, and it is here, and it is here in front of your very eyes, just parked outside there. Now, what was particularly pleasing about this journey was as we drove past the petrol stations and I looked at the prices, they've gone up a bit. Yeah. And I just simply waved <laughs> and said, the future is here. The future is electric. Two days ago, I spoke to my co-ambassador colleague, Ambassador Ali, in uh, the Dominican Republic, where InterEnergy, of course, has had a huge success. And we apl uh, applaud the company for that initiative. But what the company said to my colleague, Ambassador Ali, when are you going to get a vehicle like your colleague in Jamaica? So maybe they've got more of these charging stations in the Dom Rep, but we have started something very new and exciting over here. Now, what is it that is different? Well, some of the things have not changed. The car feels like a regular car. It has a speed that I didn't dare drive it at today. Uh, the climb over in the mountain in here was effortless. It really felt as though it could have a lot more in it. And we now have this confidence that if we decide today to just detour a little bit and not complete the journey we had in mind, but add on another day and enjoy the good weather, well, I no longer have this concern of whether I have to run back to Kingston to charge up or to go to Montego Bay where we have our second charging station, we can stop by here. And I have a confession to make. This is our favorite stop off point anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so we now have an extra reason to stop by here. The other thing I would say is that early adoption is always a brave decision but it is a decision worth making. It was 18 months ago that the Foreign Commonwealth Office said, how many 
our commissioners and ambassadors would like to sign up for a vehicle. We've got 30 of them. I put up my hand and I said, Jamaica is ready, I'm ready, and here it is. So we're one of the first to actually have an official vehicle, all electric. The second thing is that alongside all the other manufacturers, uh, Jaguar Land Rover have made a commitment that is probably more brave than anybody else. They have said that in four years time, they will stop manufacturing vehicles driven by petrol and diesel engines. The Defender, the Discovery, the Range Rover, the I-Pace, the F-Pace, the XC, all of them, every single one of them will be electric powered and they will lose nothing in their performance. So for me, it was important in support of British business to show everybody in Jamaica that this is a real option and, a, and one that we can help the company, but also help the country become more eco-friendly. So I congratulate each and every one of you. I wish you huge success. And as the 63 charging stations roll out, I will pinpoint them on my app just to make sure I'm never far away from an evergreen, uh, evergo uh, uh, charging station. So I thank you very much for allowing me to share this day with you. All right. Thank you so much, Your Excellency Ahmad. Now, this gentleman has over 25 years of experience in the energy sector with extensive knowledge in project development and management. He joined the Jamaica Energy Partners in 1996 as the chief project engineer. And in March 2000, he was appointed general manager, making him the youngest national to lead an electric company in Jamaica. Wayne McKenzie's career in the power industry began as a planning engineer at JPS, where he was employed from 1990 through 1996 to CEO of Jamaica Energy Partners and West Kingston Power Partners. He's here today, and he's going to be giving you the closing address and the launch of an Evergrow demonstration. Mr. McKenzie, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And our most honorable Andrew Holness, honorable Daryl Vaz, honorable Robert Montague, Ambassador, how are you? President of JPS, Michelle Gontois, and my host, and well wishes. Good morning. Five years ago, oh, I forgot to mention our chairman, Rolando Gonzalez Bunster. Five years ago, Rolando, in recognizing JEP's 20 years in the Jamaican landscape, said he wants to leave a legacy. We have 1.2 gigawatt of installed generating capacity. And five years ago, he said he wants to leave a legacy where his children and grandchildren can live in an environment where they can breathe and feel air and atmosphere that is reduced of carbon. And in that group, we have transformed almost all our assets to gas. And has added on that our capacity for all other assets with renewable, whether it's wind, hydro or solar and about three years ago Rolando took his mandate another to another level he went into electric mobility because if you think about it there are three basic constituents of, of carbon contributors here it's in energy which is either the supply of electricity or mining and the other one is transportation so he, he's not in mining but he's in he's in electricity we have transformed that fleet so he's created an impact in reducing carbon footprint way before a number of countries join onto this philosophy in introducing charging stations across the regions that we operate. The other thing about Rolanda, which, which is most impressive is, and the Prime Minister spoke about it, Ambassador spoke about it, uh, sorry, High Commissioner spoke about it, and, um, and the minister spoke about it, is the fact that we're, in, we're entering into a space where we probably will have more chargers than electric vehicle. But the reality of the situation is this. It is a commitment to change, 
and a foresight to see where we as a company with our partner JPS to supply the energy will transform this country into a cleaner environment which will, which will, will cause a reduction in the cost, the operational cost to those who own vehicles. And that's, that's exactly what this is about. The commissioner spoke about the price of the fuel, the electricity versus gas, and it is already cheaper. But there's more to it than that. An electric car has two basic components. It has a motor which is anchored to a wheel and has one gear. So it has a lot of torque. And internal combustion engines has a lot of moving parts, right? So it, you know, I mean, the Prime Minister spoke about three, but I can probably think of 10,000 other parts that affects the efficiency of that car. And we're now moving from the complexity of an internal combustion engine to a very, very simple single gear unit, which is forward and backward, hooked up to a wheel by a motor. And it's also creating new employment for those who have not looked at from a visionary perspective in engineering. So this creates another landscape for Jamaica to harness, and we need to embrace it. Um, today we have our suppliers, our car dealers who support us wholeheartedly. And coincidentally, the ambassador drives the Jaguar. President drives a Porsche and I drive a Mercedes. So we endorse the dealership, all right? Um, there's really not much more to say than everybody here, JPS ourselves, JPS our partner ourselves, and the High Commissioner who has taken a leap in bringing the first electric vehicle without any charging station here to believe in a concept that will create a better environment for our children, our children, and children. And we, JEP and JPSCO, are here to support that, to support a landscape where the, the fluctuation in fuel prices will not exist because we embrace a, a fuel which is relatively stable, which is supported by renewable, so it creates security to the country and it secures and it creates sustainability to the market. And that is exactly what e-mobility is about. So today, as I conclude and thank every single person, not to forget my friend Steve Bennett, who without thinking said we could use this spot. He, he, he basically said, Wayne, how many spots you need? I didn't, I didn't want to put all our 60 chargers here, so I just asked him for two. But Steve, thank you very much. And again, the team, the project team that worked on this endeavor, it was like less than 90 days in putting all of this together. And we have four chargers down already, and we have two more to go. So guys, thank you very much. And um, I'm gonna ask Michelle to, with me, unveil our chargers. We'll demonstrate how this work, and then I'm gonna give the you the protocol, sir. I'm going to give you a charge, but Michelle will definitely get some charge. All right? <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Bennett, again, we just want to thank you so much for facilitating us here at uh, the Richmond Estate. So we're going to have the unveiling now of the charger. Mr. Mackenzie, Monsieur Gantois, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the wave of the future. Clean technology, affordable, accessible reducing pollution, and of course, putting Jamaica ahead of the curve. It's all about Evergo. And Jamaica leading the charge in the Caribbean.
You can always go to interenergy.com. You'll be able to download the app from both the Google and Apple Play Store. And of course, the app is very, very functional. You can follow Evergo on Instagram at evergo underscore Jamaica. You can also visit them online at evergo.net. All right. All right, guys, this, this is relatively simple. It's what we have here is our cable that we plug into this electric flap. Mm -hmm. and then we have this RFID card that we tap. You can use the RFID card or you can use the app itself. Once it's armed, then it automatically starts charging. If you want to know if your car is being charged, then you will see inside the car where the battery is showing that it's being charged. And it's as simple as that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. McKenzie. And of course, we have to big up our partners, hmm. Porsche, BMW, and Jaguar. The new I-Pace has the DNA of a Jaguar. So naturally, it offers an exhilarating ride. iPACE uses a state-of-the-art 90 kilowatt hour battery, enabling sustained periods at maximum power. The battery's position provides the vehicle with a low center of gravity and near perfect weight distribution, further enhancing driving dynamics. Two of the same high-power compact electric motors, as used in Jaguar's Formula E race car, deliver 400 PS and 696 Newton meters of immediate torque, producing a 0 to 100 kilometers per hour time of 4.8 seconds. The all-aluminium architecture of the car makes it strong and rigid. The new I-Pace has all-wheel drive as standard to ensure controlled handling in all conditions. Double wishbone suspension at the front, an integral link rear suspension, optimize agility and responsiveness, delivering a drive that is unmistakably Jaguar. At higher speeds, the suspension system lowers itself to reduce drag, creating less demand on the battery, allowing you to travel further on a single charge. And with push-button simplicity and no gear changes, you can focus on the sheer thrill of the drive. Engaging dynamic mode instantly sharpens the vehicle's performance delivering greater agility and controlled handling. The all-new Jaguar I-Pace. Electrifying performance. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, to the launch of Evergo. We are, after all, the sprint capital of the world, which is why we have to be one of the early adopters right here, leading the charge in technology and clean energy. I know you're, 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 you've been very, very cooperative this morning, but we wouldn't allow you to come here and not be fed in true Jamaican hospitality. So, ladies and gentlemen, lunch is now served. Thank you.